This is a rune guide for Sayoth Med. If you don't know me, I am a challenger Sayoth OTP on the west, peaking over 1100 LP in season 12. But before we get into the runes, I want to talk to you a little bit about what you should expect from this video. So, what I'm not going to give you, I'm not going to give you the best rune setup, because I simply can't. Every game is different, every matchup, team comp, all your different playstyles and elos. Simply, every game, every player is different. But what I am going to give you, I'm going to give you your tools to figure out what is best for you. Instead of going to some site and finding some suboptimal room page, you should now be able to make your own. So if you watch this video to the end, I am confident you can make the right adjustments for each game when picking runes for Sarath in the mid lane. All right, let's talk major runes. The three major runes that I think is viable for Sarath is uh, Arcane Comet, it is First Strike, and it is Dark Harvest. But let's start out with Arcane Comet. All right, Arcane Comet. So my overall thought with Arcane Comet is that for you to pick this rune, it needs to significantly change your laning phase because it is an early game rune. You pick it for the early game. It does not scale as well as First Strike or Dark Harvest into the late game. So if it takes you from a heavy losing lane to an even lane or an even lane to a winning lane, then suddenly this rune is very, very powerful. But when is it good and when is it bad? I think overall Arcane Comet is strong if you are against a mid laner with low mobility and low sustain while being bad against high mobility and high sustain. So a good example could be Vygar. It's very easy to land spells on him. He can't dodge the Comet in any way. He has no sustain in his kit. So Comet can apply a lot of pressure in that lane. While let's say something like Silas or Yasuo, like even when you hit a spell, it's not always your Comet is going to hit and it's probably not going to do enough to really change the laning phase that much. So that might be some bad scenarios. So that is my thoughts on Arcane Comet. All right, let's talk first strike. Right off the bat, this is personally my least favorite rune because this is the weakest of the three, but this is also the best scaling rune of the three. So depending on what the elo and what your playstyle are, this might go a bit up and down for you, but for me, it is the weakest of the three. First Strike for me follows the same philosophy as with uh, Arcane Comet, where with Arcane Comet, if you significantly can improve your lane, it's a good choice. Where this, with First Strike, if it significantly like, makes your lane worse, then it's no longer an option. So if it takes you from an even lane to a heavy losing lane, then First Strike is no longer good, I think. So like, when is it good? When is it bad? Like, let's say, um, let's say again with Vygar, it's a good example. where It's a lane where you can apply a lot of pressure if you pick Arcane Comet or even Dark Harvest, maybe. But if you pick First Strike, suddenly you take a heavy winning lane into maybe an even, like, you just lack that extra pressure. So maybe you can't even punish him in the early game. You might scale a little bit better, but you could have gotten that gold from a plate or extra minions denying him minions, getting maybe one kill. Like, you don't have to do that much with the other runes to outscale First Strike. So, but when uh, when is it good? I think the first dog is good in the lanes where like it simply doesn't change anything, and it will pre like most of the time it will be a lane that is so losing that no matter what you do, you will just lose it. And I think this is especially against Irelia. I think that is the best example. No matter what trade you take versus her, you will always lose it. It's just a fact. So with first dog, you can give that a little bit extra scaling so you don't lose as hard because nothing is going to change at the lane so but the, that is my thoughts on first strike all right let's talk dark harvest this is my personal favorite rune not only because i think it is strong but also simply because it's very fun to play with so dark harvest is by nature like a feast of famine rune it is it is the strongest snowballing rune and has the potential to be the best scaling one but it also has the drawback of it could be the weakest one if you like get no stacks and don't get going so why is it strong and when is it strong and all that it is like what it does it has incredible synergy with your ultimates so whenever you like roam to a sideline ultimate it is very often to help finish off a target so a lot of the time on your first hit you will proc the dark harvest and it is very impactful when it's also good it's also very very strong in team fights and it is simply because it is a reset mechanic you get dark harvest kill on one then you're on the next, on the next, on the next. So suddenly you can string together three or four kills very, very quickly. That is the same with something like Jinx reset or Tristana jump or any of these kind of champs with 
reset abilities, they are incredible powerful in team fights. So, but when is it weak? It is primarily weak, I would say, against tanky team comps. Like it struggles if it's a very beefy target, it will not do any significant damage and you have to kill that target if you proc it before you can use it on anyone else. <clears throat> Dark Harvest is also, the reason you pick it, I think is often because Comet isn't good enough or First Strike is too bad. And in my case, I feel like that is a lot of the time. So Dark Harvest, very fun, try it out if you haven't. All right, that's about Dark Harvest. All right, let's talk minor runes. So before I start getting into mana flow, I think it's important for Sarah to have at least one mana regeneration rune somewhere in your rune setup. It can be either mana flow, it can be person of mind, or even something like biscuits can work plenty for you. It will at least give you that little bit extra that you do need because it becomes very difficult to play Sarah if you don't have any mana rune. It's just, you're gonna feel mana stopped a lot of the time and very limited in what you can do. So. This is why we just pick mana flow here basically every time because it just makes sense. The other two doesn't synergize that well, well with what Sarah wants. So mana flows is just this obvious pick here. So now a bit more interesting thing, transcendence or absolute focus, which are the two viable here, I believe. I usually pick absolute focus simply because if absolute focus isn't good on Sarah, it shouldn't be good on anyone. <laughs> Like, Zareth has pretty high AP scalings, at least decently high, right? And you are almost always above 70% health in fights. Because if you are lower, that probably means there's a good chance you're about to die, basically. Also, like, I'd, I would rather have raw AP than ability haste most of the time, simply because you, you need a certain threat on Zareth to be viable in a team fight. If people don't fear your combo at least a little bit, it will be very hard to fight. Because people can just roll over you, they can start ignoring you, but if, if they fear that one big combo, then, then suddenly you are a threat, and that's very important. Now to a very interesting discussion that I think there are a lot of different opinions about. It is, do you go Gathering or do you go Scorch? So, obviously Gathering is the best scaling rune, but you gotta keep in mind, it doesn't really outscale Scorch before 20 minutes, and even so, it's not like Scorch that disappears, like Scorch is the rune at that point. It still these does a decent chunk. It doesn't heavily outscale at 20 minutes, right? At 30 minutes, it will heavily outscale, but 30 minutes is a very long time as most games are done before 30 minutes. So, so why am I saying this? Because it's also Scorch. You don't need to do a whole lot with Scorch to outscale it at 20 minutes. Let's say you get one kill. That's 300 go for the kill. Maybe there's an assist. So let's say 400. You maybe get a plate or you deny gold or XP or... There's so many facts, maybe you get a Drake, so that's easily, like, one kill, one single kill would easily outskill the 20 minute max scaling of a Gathering Storm. Like, you get the equivalent of gold, because it's 24 AP, right? That's five, 600 gold. So, realistically, a lot of the games, you need to hit the 30 minute mark before Gathering actually outperforms Scorch. So this is why, in my games, I almost always go Scorch. But as I said before, playstyles change and with elos and all that stuff. So maybe you find you that you are often in games that last very long and then gathering might be the right choice for you. But I will say I will not recommend gathering if you are in a high elo game because people are simply too aggressive and the game snowballs too hard. But if you are silver or anywhere around that, maybe gathering is for you. It could be very powerful in those games. Let's talk about the inspiration tree. So I think the two viable runes the first row here is Magical Footwear and Perfect Timing in Niche Cases. So I think Magical Footwear is just nice. It, it's just, it, it, you like you spend less gold because you don't have to buy boots, right? So you can get to your core items quicker. It's, it's just, it's free gold basically. Also the 10 movement speed you get from Magical Footwear is very nice with Sarah as he's very immobile. So that extra bit of movement speed can be very nice. So this is just nice all around. So. While perfect timing is also very powerful, it, it, it doesn't like uh, improve your scaling, you know? Like, because with magical footwear, you have to spend 300 less gold. With perfect timing, like, you probably don't want to go into an early hour class anyway. So, it is only if you really think you're in a game where it will absolutely like come into play. But most of the time, I think magical footwear is simply just the way to go here. 
So now we come into the second row, and the second row is pretty interesting, right? Because all three runes kind of works. So I think Biscuit is, you go Biscuits when you need the mana. Like if you don't have a mana rune anywhere, then I think you kind of have to go Biscuits. But it can also just be very nice if you want a bit more sustain in lane, just a bit more lane power. If you fear you're going to get poked out too hard, then Biscuits can be nice. Minion Dematerializer is, if you want some extra pushing power or if you're struggling with finishing off the backline with a Q in level 9. Well, I do think it is the weakest of the three, but it does have a place. Like, you can play it. It's not total grief. It, it is very nice to have. But then there's Futures Market. It's, it's very simple, right? It just improves your bias. It, it makes you a bit more flexible when you're back. Um, I think Futures Market is primarily good when you don't really need the biscuits. So it's just a nice, like, on-top thing you can do. Now, let's go to the last row. I think the only real option here is simply Cosmic Insight, because you're not going to go Corrupting Pot or anything for Time Warp Tonic. And eh, Approach Velocity, I don't think does anything for Sarah really. So Cosmic Insight is just a great rune. It's very nice. You pick that. <laughs> Let's talk about the Domination Tree. The first row, there is Taste of Blood and Cheap Shot. Those are the, the runes that arrive in this row. So... Taste of Blood, I think, is primarily used in heavy trading lanes. That could be something like Victor or Ari, where you continuously trade back and forth and you can keep healing with this. It gets max value, basically, right? Also, it's in the matchups where you are afraid you might lose the lane. Like, if you don't trade good enough, this just kind of improves the trading, right? So this is, like, mostly against control mages is when you want to pick this. Um, cheap Shot is, on the other hand, very good against all these kind of melee champs, like something like Akali or Silas. Basically, champions where you can get an auto attack in after hitting one of your like slower E. Lanes where you auto attack a lot. Also, like if Taste of Blood isn't very good, then Cheap Shot becomes better, right? So if it's a lane like Vyga, where he won't trade that much onto you, it just does make sense to take Taste of Blood. So Cheap Shot is nice. Also, a little side note, if you have a lot of slows and stun on your team in general, then Cheap Shot obviously becomes a little bit better. So I think Cheap Shot against like melee type champions and Taste of Blood against heavy trading control mages. I think that's a pretty good way to go. Uh, I think you primarily take this row when you are taking Dark Harvest because the other two rows is simply a bit better if you only can choose two, at least in my opinion. So let's talk the second row. I think like all of these like skin stacking AP depending on what you do and I think, simply think that eyeball collection is just the way to go because this is the one where you need takedowns to stack it and with Seraph with the ultimate you'll just be part of a lot of kills naturally and if you feel like you aren't then you should probably like look at your map play a little bit more try to be a little bit more proactive with your ulti try to see fights before they happen so you can move and like make use of this rune and just like your ultimate in general a bit better so i think eyeball collection is the way on this row now we have the last row a lot of people like taking ultimate hunter also but i do think treasure hunter is the best and that kind of goes back to the thought of you need to be a threat and Treasure Hunter simply helps you with being a threat. I think you need as much damage as humanly possible in your abilities, and Treasure Hunter just helps with that. Also, it is simply just so much gold. Like 550 gold for a rune when you stack it up, is that's just a lot. It's the same reason why something like Eyebrow Collection is a very powerful rune. It stacks up to 30 AP, which is also like 500, 600 gold. So these two together, like gives over a thousand gold in value and that just kind of insane to me and that's why i often pick these two in a lot of rune setups they just give you a lot of snowball potential and you are like you should be active on the map with the ultimate so they are very easily to stack up okay i also very shortly want to talk the position tree simply because presence of mind is in here and i do think that is probably the most powerful mana rune there is but it is very hard to justify picking simply because there isn't really any other good choice for you. There is Coupe de Gras and Cut Down, but they're just kind of underwhelming in my opinion. So I think in general, stay away from this page, but do keep in mind, Presence of Mind can be very powerful, but with other options, I don't think you can go with this, this, uh, this tree, sadly. But uh, yeah. Okay, I want to talk a bit about the, the last... 
uh, three minor runes or whatever down here. So I think most of the time the options you are going for is either attack speed or adaptive force in the first row. I think attack speed is very nice overall. I think it's a great rune. It helps with pushing. It lanes with helps with like AA, like auto attack poking in lane. Like whenever you want to like take plates, it helps a lot. It makes it a lot easier to farm under your own turret. It makes you like your auto attack shorter, so it's a less of a window for your opponent to counter attack you while you're auto attacking. Or just attack you, I mean. But if you find you're in a scenario where you're not going to attack the wave a whole lot, it could be like Aurelia is a good example, and you probably don't want to attack her a lot because you don't want to fight her at all. <laughs> then Adaptive Force is simply nice. I think in the next row, Adaptive Force is just the way to go. You don't want to go defensive here, you need damage. In the last row, Health Scaling do scale the best, but Armor or Magic is usually better for the lane. So if you're in a matchup where you're against a magic user you should usually go magic assist but if you know it's a lane where you're barely gonna trade or if the rest of the team is very 80 like physical damage then you might go over and take health scaling instead so it kind of depends you you want to look at your matchup what's best and if the rest of the team is the opposite then you might go into health scaling so i think that's just a general rule of thumb but you can't really go too wrong here i believe so I want to go through like making a room page with you. So let's go through a couple. Let's start with some like we're facing Silas. That's a very popular matchup. You'll probably face a lot. And I know a lot of people are struggling with this matchup. So let's try to go through that. So first we've got to pick a major room. So let's think Comet. Is Comet good? Well, he can often dodge your Comet with one of his abilities. Because if you let's say hit him with the W, he might try to dodge it with uh, one of his dashes and... Then, like, even if you hit it, you probably dodge the Comet in that case. So Comet just kind of feels bad. There's a lot of situations where it won't do anything. So then, do we go First Strike then, like, instead? Um, like, First Strike, you will be very weak against him, so there's a very good chance he will simply bully you in lane, right? Because he doesn't really fear you anymore. Also because the rest of the Inspiration Tree doesn't really give you any damage, right? So it's a very like defensive sort of setup, very utility focused, right? But uh, if we go over to Dark Harvest instead, now that we have acknowledged that the other two probably isn't the best choices, then Dark Harvest is just very nice. It's also great against his uh, innate, like his healing in his kit. He can be hard to finish off. So Dark Harvest, especially in team fights and stuff later, can give you that extra oomph you might need to finish him off. Also, like, both Taste of Blood and Cheap Shot is pretty great into him, right? You'll probably do some trading, so Taste of Blood could be good. But you can also maybe try and win the lane. This board may have a bit more of an uh, aggressive approach, right? That whenever you stun him or slow him and get an auto attack in, you can proc the Cheap Shot, right? Then And then there's simply because Eyeball Collection and Treasure Hunter is such powerful minor runes, in my opinion. So I would probably... Go Dark Harvest, Cheap Shot, because I want to try and win the lane usually, right? Like try to get a kill, I think that's the most fun. And then I'll pick these two, simply because I think they are great runes. And then we're in, the, in a situation, right? Okay, we, we, lack, we lack maybe a little bit of lane power since Dark Harvest is weak early. We do have the Cheap Shot. And we also lack a mana rune. So where can we get those two? We do have the biscuits over here, but I think, as I said before, you will be kind of weak in lane if you don't have any more aggressive runes, right? So it simply makes sense here to go for mana flow to get the mana rune in. And then Scorch is very nice. It just gives you a lot of early game power compared to any other rune you could pick. So it kind of also makes it so you can probably proc Dark Harvest in lane because you now have two very nice lane runes that deals a lot of damage. And then you have Dark Harvest for scaling and... These two for snowballing as well, right? And Dark Harvest. So this is like a great setup for against Silas, I think. And then we get to the choice down here with the what we choose here. I think attack speed is uh, pretty good usually if you are going to auto attack a lot or if you're going to like contest the wave. So you're going to auto attack him and you also want to be able to push the wave when needed. So I think attack speed is good here. And then I think adaptive force is just the only thing you go here. And then we come down to the, it, this row kind of depends because you want to go magic assist most of the time because Silas deals like a lot of magic damage, right? And you will do some early trading with him. Health do scale better. So if a lot of the other members of the team are physical damage, 
then I think health scaling is simply a nice in between. So that depends on the game. Look at your enemy comp. If there's like more than one magic user, then you probably just go magic assist. But if it's the rest is like AD, then health scaling looks nice. So that is an example of making a rune page against Silas, right? Okay, let's do another example. Let's try and make a rune page against Victor. So against Victor, it's uh, it kind of depends on what elo you're at, or how aggressive he is. But I'll try to make one for my games where victors are usually very aggressive in lay. They really, really try to bully you. So first off the bat, simply because of that, first strike is too weak for me. Because if I go first strike, I'll just be so weak in the lane that he will absolutely <laughs> bully me out. Then there's the question. Is something like Comet Worth? And I think that's also like depends on where you're at. In my games, I, I don't. when I've tried it, I didn't feel like I could win the lane with Comet anyways. I simply felt too weak uh, compared to him, so I didn't feel like I could really do much with Comet. It didn't really change that much in the lane. But it might for you, with a less aggressive victor, you might be able to poke him out of the lane using this. So maybe this is an option for some of you. And then there's Dark Harvest, which would be my choice here. It's simply a nice middle ground between the two. So it also gives me access to the Taste of Blood which is very nice in this heavy trading lane where I simply need some more sustain. And it gives me these two very nice scaling runes, snowball runes. As again, I have talked about, they're simply very powerful. But now we're in a situation where we again need, we need a little bit of more lane pressure so he doesn't completely kick us out of lane as you would with the first strike. So Scorch is very good here and we need the mana rune. So we have a mana flow and Scorch set up here. Attack speed is nice because we want to like be able to contest the wave. There's a good chance we'll get pushed in. So we want to farm easily on the turret. So it's like pushing power, help farming on the turret. And then magic assist down here is pretty good against Victor. You're going to take a lot of magic damage during this lane. So this is like a setup I will do against the Victor. Let's uh, do a third one. Let's take a, let's say um, Vilkos. Vilkos is this one of those like immobile mages without any sustain. So right off the bat, Arcane comes to mind. Like with First Strike, you might not be able to bully him as hard, right? You might be able to scale, but you could probably win lane pretty hard with Comet. Also, if you went First Strike, he might actually be able to bully you all, all of a sudden, right? Also, like, there's Dark Harvest is always nice, but this is one of those scenarios where I simply think Comet gains so much value because it can really impact the lane. And so I would go straight off the bat Comet. And then Mana Flow, as we talked about, is very nice. Absolute Focus, very nice. And Scorch is very nice. Simply giving you that lane power because gathering usually takes too long to scale. So if you listen to the rest of this, the video, this kind of just makes sense, right? Now, now comes the next part. What do we actually go next? Because in here, we could go Taste of Blood, right? It is a heavy trading lane. Like there will be a lot of poke back and forth. So there is for sure, if you feel like you need it, you can go Taste of Blood. But I think the power of these two runes is just a lot. So I would personally go these two. But maybe you could also go over here if you want some sustain over here and magical footwear. I mean, that's also good if you don't move around the map as much. But for me, I will definitely go these two runes. You will see this a lot. I pick these most of my games. I think they are very powerful, especially with my playstyle. I move around on the map, join all the fights I can. And this lane, I think again, attack speed is very good. Because you need to be able to match his lane, like push, so you can like keep the wave in a better state. So you don't have to worry, as, as you don't have to use as many abilities, it just makes the lane easier for you. So I would go attack speed, adaptive force, and most of the time magic assist. So this would be my setup against Velkos. Alright, I also want to talk a little bit about... Like, how do you change your rune setup depending on your team comp? Because that is something I mentioned earlier that, that does change your rune setup. I think one of the major things that changes your rune setup is your jungler and your support and the enemy jungler and support, right? So let's say you have a kindred jungle. She's an aggressive jungler. She want to get in, fight, steal camps, get, get scuttle, all that. So you need to make a page that complements her. So if you're in a position where you've maybe thought about Oh, you're not sure, should you go Dark Harvest, should you go Comet, First Strike, I don't know. If you pick something like First Strike, you won't really be able to help her, right? You give up a lot of your lane pressure. While with Comet, 
you suddenly gain lane pressure, so you might be able to help her more. Like you can maybe keep the enemy mid laner like low, or you can move better. You have better like control of the lane in general. Um, so that is just a nice option with Kindred if it makes sense for the lane, of course. But that is one of those situations where I would probably never go into a first strike, right? Because I need some sort of skirmishing power to help her out with all the skirmishes that is happening. Now, let's say enemy team has a pike support. And you're worrying, like wondering if you should go Comet or Dark, uh, Dark Harvest. You're, you're in a lane where maybe you could make use of the Comet. You could maybe bully them. But if you're against the Pike, there's a good chance you will roam mid a lot. So you might not get enough out of your Comet because you have to back off all the time. Whenever you get a lot of pressure and it's just scary moving far up into the lane. So that is when Dark Harvest might be a bit better because you can probably still proc the Dark Harvest, get some stacks going. But you don't like get outskilled as hard like you have better scaling with dark harvest right so that's why then why that might be an option for you right it can also be like again like i talked about dark harvest not being as strong into very tangy team comps so that might be a reason why you go comet and lane because then you at least get that extra early scaling while because dark harvest doesn't scale as great as it normally would so that is just some examples but i think usually the aggressiveness of the supports and the junglers in the game can impact your rune setups the most. So maybe you watched all the way through. Thank you if you did that. If you made it there anyways, you might have liked the video. Um, I spent a lot of time on this. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed it. I know it was a bit long. You might find some of it boring, but I wanted to go through everything or like most of everything. And so if you did end up liking this video, please like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. It shows that you enjoyed the video and want to see more of it. Please comment if you have any questions regarding anything or if you're wondering about stuff. Like a lot of these things might not work exactly for you, but that's why I've talked a lot about play styles and elos and stuff. Because it's simply rune setups is just very flexible depending on where you're at. So thank you for watching everyone. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one.